Okay, let's go for take two, and let's hope to God this time it doesn't crash. Sorry about that, guys. Um, apparently, just for some reason, the YouTube app crashed on me. I don't know why. It's been doing that a lot lately. Um, let me know if you guys have been having problems with the YouTube app. So, yeah, we're back. Okay, so we're back doing this. Um, I guess I should just reintroduce myself. So, hey, guys, it's Jack here. Uh, welcome back uh, to another live stream. Um, so yeah, uh, we're doing a little something different today. Feel a lot better than before. Uh, now I'm feel I'm like doing so much better and now we're getting back to work on things. So, hey Huey, good to see you. Um, yeah, uh, the YouTube app crashed on me. So that's why like my live stream went dead. Uh, it was that and our internet's been acting like shit because, um, we're using too much power and it's surging up the power and it's causing like a glitch like the um, Wi-Fi to flicker on and off because of just the amount of power we use. We have a really old house, so, or both, you know, it's like Zordon, you know, too much power is dangerous. So, yeah, as you guys can see, um, yeah, we're doing uh, some stop motion today. Now, I haven't done stop motion since I was a kid or since I started YouTube back in 2007 uh, when some of my first YouTube videos were Lego videos. Like, we're done on these really shitty uh lego studio software which i eventually evolved into uh pinnacle which is now being used for this so it's connected to my camera and everything so as you guys can see we're doing today uh we're doing stuff for power rangers and we have here in terms of doing animation we have the original toys these are not these are not replicas this isn't the legacy version these are the original bandai toys from 93 now if you're wondering um what the hell happened? Well, like, where the hell I got this? Goodwill, the whole Megazord, complete and all, $10. I am not kidding. So, lucky enough, I have this. We're going to use this in the review. Now, we've already animated the Tyrannosaurus. Uh, we've done the Mastodon. And the only ones we haven't done yet are the Triceratops, the saber tooth Tiger, and the, the Pterodactyl. So, yeah, and here's the Mastodon. I had to modify them a little bit. But it's all good. So yeah, we're gonna kind of just go through the process of how like of stop motion, especially for the newcomers who don't know what the hell it is. So stop motion has been a process since the early days of movies. Uh, obviously started by like the days of the silent era. You know, like you make any kind of movie and it's stop motion essentially because you're just taking a series of pictures and you're moving them fast to make it look like a moving image. That's the essentially motion pictures, as, as they say back in the '30s. So. Uh, but the main person who really made it popular was, of course, uh, Willis O'Brien with um, two little films, The Lost World and King Kong. And yes, this is the um, this is the vinyl uh, Toys R Us exclusive T Japan exclusive T-Rex of the original Kong. Uh, thank you to the members of GFest for getting me this along with Kong himself. But yeah, it just started basically, yeah, just a classic, you know, latex puppets. You move it, you take a picture. You move it, you take a picture. And then it just looks like he's moving around. I don't know why he's, hop, like, limping on one leg. But he's like, eh, eh. But with stop motion, you can do anything. You can do it with toys, like we're doing here. You can do it with Legos. You can do it with um, pretty much any kind of process. Clay, like uh, Gumby. Gumby's a popular stop motion character. Um, it, it, the California Raisins, all kinds of stuff. So... Yeah, today we're going to be doing uh, stuff for Power Rangers. So the character we have, we've pretty much gotten half done, but we're going to get more on it, is uh, the Triceratops here. The Triceratops, uh, this was used by Billy, the Blue Ranger of the series, played by David Yost. Um, now, I've never met David Yost. Um, as far as I know, Power Rangers-wise, the only person I've ever met is Amy Jo Johnson, because she actually lives in Toronto, which is my local town. Uh, I've met her at a couple of Comic-Con. She's a very sweet lady, very sweet woman. Um, really appreciative of her fans. Uh, but when it comes to Power Rangers, I've been old school. So, and this is for the new movie review, like the new 2017 movie, which I'm not going to say what my opinions are, but given with the Megazord here, you can probably already tell which one I like better. So, uh, we're basically going to go through this and uh, kind of show you the process. So basically it's just, we're recreating the shots where the Zords all come together. So we're going to basically have the Triceratops in the desert. So we're using a green screen just to use that. We're going to have a background plate later. So to show you the process, I'm actually going to bring the camera a little bit slightly. Oh, shit. Don't want to lose you. And kind of show you the set. So, uh, yeah, let's go to the set. And there we are. So here's the process, essentially. I just got to move the wire here. Um, 
I'm using Pinnacle Studios. I'm using the import stop motion thing that actually connects to my camera. Now I have a capture card that connects to Pinnacle. The actually the capture card is a Pinnacle product that I actually did find at Goodwill. Again, five dollars, and it worked perfectly. So it works great. I'm using an AV cable uh, to make this happen. So it's connected to the camera. I got a really nice light. Um, lighting is key to any setup. I'm starting to learn this now. And yeah, we're just going to kind of show you the process of it. And so we have our little stop motion monitor so I can see it in perfect HD, crystal clear quality there. And then you can see the model there and the camera there. So I've got like three monitors for this thing. I've also got a light in the back, uh, thanks to a TV studio that gave me this light. So it allows me a bit more of a, like better uh, quality lighting. Um, but unfortunately I'm not liking how it's looking there. It's looking a little too bright. So we're just going to dim that down a little bit. There we go. That's a lot better. So what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the camera to how it looked in the show. So I think the angle was is where the, you know, the Triceratops, uh, we'll just look at the monitor here. The Triceratops, when it's roaring, it's like, you know, it comes forward and comes forward in the shot while it's going through the desert going, Rah! and we're just basically going to move it forward and animate the head. Very simple. Good way to start. So for any stop motion fans, this is a good chance to get a little education from the master himself. This is all the same process we did on Kong. When we um, animated the dinosaurs, it was just Bristol board green screen on a table with plasticine models. Sometimes, uh, uh, what is it? Um, what you call it? Sometimes it was um, actual models on set, so we had something to kind of react to. So yeah, I'm just gonna adjust the camera very slightly. Now I'm shooting at a low angle, so it gives it more like the impression that these things are giants, and we're just gonna adjust it where we can see this guy just gonna and we're also gonna hide the wheels because the wheels are gonna be a separate shot some of them i'm actually been using the camera for i've also been using my phone with like some slow-mo shots uh for the mastodon actually the mastodon is actually the only zord you will see in this uh video where it has a practical set because it's snowing like crazy outside and i figured hey in the scene where the mastodon rises up out of the snow why not just use snow and build a little model out of snow so that's what I did. I just shoveled some snow around and just made the model and it all worked and I did it all in slow-mo. So it's going to look great. So we have, as you guys can see, kind of where the monitor is. I can flip that, which is pretty cool. So normally if there was, there's a construction site down the road, which is a perfect desert area. Normally I would use that for something like this, but because we're so late in schedule and it's snowing outside, we unfortunately can't. So it's mostly going to be green screen stuff for the Triceratops. Now, I'm not sure if the lighting is affecting the way you guys are seeing this, but you're going to have to make do. Um, you're going to have to go with a bit of the Spielberg lighting here because it's really, um, yeah, there's no way I can, I can kind of dim it a little bit because um, I can at least still get the same quality. So we're just going to, I just want to make sure I'm catching it with the monitor. And I want to kind of get this out of the seam crack area here because I don't want it affecting the shot. Yeah, it's a little bright. It's like light bright. Light bright, light bright, shine so bright. Um, funny enough, um, I want to give a shout out to um, one of my favorite toy reviewers. Uh, I think it's like JT Mitchell something. But uh, he was doing a live stream and I was telling him about this. And I hope he's watching. I hope he gets a chance to watch this stuff. Because this is kind of, gets to see the process. Because he did these excellent reviews of the, of the Power Rangers Zord toys, which are great. So yeah, we're going to start him all the way back here, buddy. All the way back there. I just have to take a drink. Now, I've been in here for a couple days animating. Uh, good to see you, Kevin. Yeah, we're just doing some uh, um, you know, stop motion here. So, here's the process. So, we have our first shot essentially ready. So, the first thing I'm going to do is go to the capture frame, and that's going to be our first shot. Now, right now, we are shooting at 30 frames a second, and we're also going in HD at about 1080p because we want to get the highest quality possible. So we're going to go about, yeah, I think we're going to go about 30 frames a second. Is uh, Normally it would be 24, but, or you know what, let's go 24 for this one. Let's do some experiment here and see which uh, frame is better, because I've been trying different frames. Um, thoughts on Coraline? It's good. A little terrifying. A little too scary for kids, but it's good. I think kids need to be scared. Let's see. So we got the first shot. So we have our model. So we're going to capture a frame. At least I hope that worked. Okay, capture frame today, Junior. Uh-oh, we might be having a problem here. Let's see. Huh. For some reason, 
My animation does not want to fucking work. What is happening? All right, let's try this again. So I think we're all good here. Uh, should we go to... Let's try this. So let's capture frame. There we go. Got the first frame. Okay. So you got your frame. Next thing you do, you just slightly move it. Not too much. Mind you, just very slightly. And you do it again. You click. Obviously, you get your picture. And you do it again. You move it very slightly. You don't want to give up too much. Because the thing is, if you move it too much, it's going to go super fast. If you move it too slow, uh, it's going to be in slow motion. So there's that. Click. So you just keep doing this. You keep, you keep just doing the animation. Move it ever so slightly. And when you get hundreds of thousands, it creates the illusion of stop motion. So this was a process all the way back to uh, Willis O'Brien on King Kong, then passed on to Harryhausen, uh, who did, you know, One Million Years B.C., uh, Seven Voyage to Sinbad. Uh, he ended up also doing, and then that was passed down to Phil Tippett, who did uh, Empire Strikes Back, did the Walkers in Star Wars. It's kind of like what we're doing here. Uh, and then that got passed on to so many other people. Um, even kids today can do it now, which is great. Like, you guys could do it now. It's so easy. Um... So yeah, like, I mean, I'll be a little bit focused on this, but I'll be able to chat. So if you guys have any questions, I'll try to answer as much as I can. Now we're going to bring the head up a little bit to kind of give him that, that look. Um, Ray Harryhausen was, yeah, he was the, he, per, like, if Willis O'Brien started it, Harryhausen perfected it. And I actually, good news, I have a script for my first Harryhausen review because I feel like I've talked so much about Willis O'Brien. I've really talked about Harryhausen and I love Harryhausen. So, sooner or later, I'm going to review something Harry Cousin, and it's going to start with my favorite film of his. And if you guys know me, you know which one's my favorite. And it's also, my, I'll put this out too, it's also my favorite Hammer film. That's, that's saying something. So, it's a Harry Housen film, and it's a Hammer film. If you guys can guess it in the comments, that will be my all-time favorite Harry Housen film. And on top of that, um... Again, like, again, I'm just jumping to one Harryhausen film right now. I'm not really doing any, like, in particular orders or anything, or a Harryhausen thon or anything, because there's just so many other movies I want to talk about next year. Um, one of which, I'm going to just say this right now, a movie I'm actually really thinking about reviewing next year is Legend, uh, Ridley Scott's film. It's now one of my favorite films of all time. It's just a beautiful film. Um, one Million Years B.C. Yep. One Million Years B.C. Uh, and it's not, and I have seen the original, and I did not care for it, uh, Huey. I thought it was really, I'm like, I'm more with the remake, unfortunately. But yeah, One Million Years BC is my favorite Harryhausen film of all time. And on top of that, it just, it's probably some of the best dinosaur effects I've ever seen in the film. In period, hands down. Like, some of the best ever. So, for me, that is my favorite Harry Hasen film. It's just a great movie, too. It's just a fun movie. The score is fantastic. Um, the whole Raquel Welch pinup thing, that's the only thing I'm kind of like, in terms of iconability, I'm not a fan of. See, most people are like, oh, I'm going to go see it because Raquel Welch is hot. <laughs> no, no, fuck, fuck that. I'm going to go see it for the goddamn dinosaurs. You know, that's, that's all I care about. So, we're just going to slightly bring it up a bit. Maybe go a little bit faster. Yeah, so we're going at about, right now, 30 frames a second. Oh, you're, li you're listening to Ray Charles. Uh, uh, which one's Ray Charles? Yeah, the blind one, right? The one that Robot Chicken did. Ray 2, Ray's Day Out, coming next Christmas. Um, there, Yeah, there's four different cuts of Legend. I know the fourth one isn't available. It was only for press screenings. And according to the Legends, pun intended, Ridley Scott uh, screened the film... And all he could hear was giggling, and he smelled pot. Now, granted, Legend is a movie you could probably watch a little high, but um, just make sure you're using you're using it responsibly. But it's it's a it's a good film. It's the reason I say it's now one of my favorites is because it's now I can say this the most beautiful film I've ever seen in my life. Like I, there's rare times that I defined a film as gorgeous or beautiful, like like a beautiful. One, essentially legend is legend is literally seeing is a movie version of the most beautiful woman you've ever seen it is a gorgeous film and it's and i do want to review it next year because next year is its 35th anniversary 
And I think that's a perfect time to talk about it. Plus, I want to kind of weave it into the into the show, obviously. Ever seen Forbidden Planet? Is that it? Is that the Harryhausen film where they go to the moon with the fucking worm things? I can't. I can't that's the one I have a hard time figuring out which uh, which uh, universe that is, um, like or which uh, Harryhausen film that is. That's that's a toughie for me. So I'm just gonna bring it up a little bit. Yeah, I also gotta focus on this, guys. So I don't wanna draw too much attention away from from uh, the animation here. I'm just going to quickly uh, make sure that's all good. Put more forward. Yeah, we're doing, a, I think it's about two seconds worth of animation here. And what's cool about toys is that you can get them done a lot faster because um, it's a little easier to control. And it's not as many joints. There's a guy, okay, there's a guy I just discovered on YouTube who... Uh, I discovered one of his stop motion Kong videos, but he's also a big uh, kaiju fan. And honestly, uh, what's great about it is that he's doing all. Like at first, I was thought he was using like figures of Godzilla figures, like Godzilla plus plus figures. But all his figures were uh, stop motion armatures, and I'm like, oh my god! So I immediately subscribed to this guy. I can't remember who he is, but he's like amazing, and I'm like. Where does he get his puppets? I need to know because I want like somehow doing that and doing that with like a future project would be great. So, um, I've seen that guy. Yeah, yeah, I can't remember. Um, ever review? Ever seen the not racist movies? Some of the stuff. Um, I have, and my only complaints are is that Disney won't release it, and. It's funny that they won't release this movie yet. They're perfectly fine with a goddamn water ride theme park at their at Disneyland. Oh, uh, Splash. Oh, people who go on Splash Mountain. That's, yeah, that's Song of the South, The Ride. <laughs> that's Disney's version of slavery, The Ride. It's just, it baffles me. It baffles me that they can let that happen and not that. I am not referring to Monster... I, I heard of Monster Island Buddies. I know who they are. Um... Not much watched much of them, but I know they're super duper popular on the kaiju community. Um, I think Legend is the Rocky Horror. No, 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 it's the Legend. You know what it is about Legend? Uh, it's the Legend of Zelda movie that everybody's wanted, yet it came out a year before the first fucking game. And Legend has it again, pun intended, that Shigeru Miyamoto and Nintendo in, were inspired to make Zelda because of Legend. So in a way, Legend is the Zelda movie we never got. And that's what I want to title the video, you know, Legend Review, 35 years later. The Zelda movie we've always wanted but never seen. You know, because that's what it is. You know, Jack is Link, Mia Sarah is Zelda, and then you got Tim Curry. Look, Tim Curry is Ganon in a Zelda movie in itself, if he was in good health. You've already got perfect casting right there. Come on, Tim Curry, who wouldn't want to see Tim Curry as Ganon? That'd be amazing. I would love that. If it, like again, if he was in good health, I would love to have seen him at least voice scanning. So we're gonna try to get at least one couple more frames in. One, we're gonna get one more frame in here. If Wikizilla asked you to do a kaiju profile in seventy six, would you do it? Absolutely. But I would probably more likely copy paste from any research I can find, like from books and shit. Because, um, actually, fun fact. Uh, I just friended on Facebook uh, one of my favorite authors, uh, Ray Morton, who wrote the book King Kong, The History of the Movie Icon. Equally the best Kong book, and equally, essentially, the Bible of Kong mythology, the Bible of Kong history. If you guys want to get into the whole history of Kong, uh, that book is essentially the Bible. For me, that is the Bible of Kong uh, history, if you want to know it all. Um, so for me, that's always been my favorite. So we got the frames. I'm just going to do click one more. So we have the shot. It's pretty much good. Now I'm just going to play it back. Oh, that looks so good. You guys want to see it? You, you, you guys want to see this thing? I'll, I'll let you see it, and I'll put it on repeat. Let's see. Oh, that looks so good. That looks amazing. Okay. So let me just take you guys over here to get kind of the whole ordeal. So we only did like a few frames, but if we do a little magic, 
there's how it looks. Yeah, look at that. And the green screen looks perfect, so it's going to be good to kind of get in the shots of the desert. Um, maybe a bit of dust particles in the foreground. But this, yeah, it looks fantastic. And honestly, like, the original toys, honestly, are pretty kick-ass. Like, they're pretty good quality toys. If you guys can get them, please do. Uh, I will most likely plan something for the 50th anniversary of Kong 76. Um, I know maybe tomorrow I'll be shooting a tribute to both uh, uh, Renee, Renee and uh, Will Shepard. Because since I covered, uh, uh, was it, uh, John Gallman, uh, the director, I figured I might as well give my, uh, give my uh, condolences to uh, Renee and so on. So, yeah, that's essentially a shot. That's how you do a stop motion shot right there. So now we're going to go and we're going to animate uh, his little butt there. We're going to flip his tail up and show his, his little butthole there. Just take it for what it is. And it's the shot where, like, the, the gun basically swings up. So, uh, basic, or actually the first thing we should do, we should do the wheels. We got to shoot the wheels. Now, the wheels are easy. Because all we have to do is kind of lower down the uh, camera. And we're going to shoot it on the camera. Because that way, it's still practical and it works. Let's get a little bit in focus there. There we go. So all I gotta do is just push this guy. Now watch this. Wanna see how I do a quick shot? So I got the camera here. And all I'm gonna do is press record. Wait for the focus. Wait for the focus. Come on, buddy. Let's get the focus. Come on. There we go. And here we go. And that's a shot. <laughs> that's a shot of the wheels. Uh, that's all it is. Now we're gonna go on to now we're gonna go on, on to his butt. Now we're going to his ass. We're going to the train. We're into the we're going to where where Laura Duran was picking up the shit in Jurassic Park. So yeah, basically it's gonna kind of flip up and just do that kind of motion. So I'm thinking I'm gonna actually sh try to show the gun kind of like maybe going like flipping like that and then just trying to figure out the best way to get this shot because I do want to do it in stop motion. Just want to make it look good. Let's see, I don't want to show too much of the tires, too. That's the trick, is getting the right angle for a shot like this, because you don't want to end up showing too much. Otherwise, it uh, kills the illusion. So we have the shot there. It's all good. And I'm going to show you guys a quick... So first thing I'm gonna actually going to do is I'm just going to edit this in the timeline, because I do want to render the shot before it's finished. Uh, import complete. Close. Let's say changes, save. Okay, give me that shot. All right, here we are. So we have the shot. It's looking good. I'm just going to render it, and we'll get back to it. In the meantime, we'll answer some questions. Anybody want to see a Transformer 7? No! We're so done. Unless it's Bumblebee. Unless I heard Bumblebee was good. Um, But you know what? I know I'm going to sound like a saint for asking this, but look, I'm done with G1 Transformers. Can we get a Beast Wars going, please? Can we finally get Beast Wars? Because Beast Wars was my generation's Transformers. Remember, I was not an 80s kid. I didn't grow up with the original Transformers. I grew up with the 90s in the 90s. So Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. I see the 80s were the year of robots. You know, you had Megatron, Voltron, Tron, I don't know if that's robotics. You had the Terminator, you had all these robot shits. Um all this robot shit in the 80s. You guys have the 80s stuff. 90s, we were all about the dinosaurs. 90s were all about dinosaurs. So, Dragon Carnosaur, um, and Power Rangers. Because Power Rangers was just... Because what's better than dinosaurs? Giant robot dinosaurs, of course. You know, like, look, honestly. That's what I say in my review. What's better than dinosaurs? Fucking robot dinosaurs. Like, that's, that's the best part. So... There were, we had all that in the 90s, so, and, like, even Beast Wars was dinosaurs, you know? We had Dinobot, who, voiced by the great Scott McNeil, who was a straight-up velociraptor, uh, and then we had Megatron, who, what better form for Megatron to take as a Predacon, the Tyrannosaurus Rex, and it looks amazing. Uh, so, yeah, we were all about dinosaurs in the 90s, so for me, a Beast Wars movie is what I would want. Have you ever seen, favorite Stanley Kubrick movie? This is tough, because I've only started to watch his work. Um, I thought Dr. Strangelove was okay, was a little boring. Uh, haven't seen The Shining yet, but that's on my to-do list, because I want to see Dr. Strange at some point. Uh, 
2001 I thought was a little was a little slow. I've seen bits of it, bits of it, but so far from what I've seen, it's very. But I do want to watch it eventually because some of these I'm watching with Josh because he's a huge Kubrick fan. I saw Eyes Wide Shut. What the fuck was that? Okay, because here's how I can describe Kubrick. Kubrick likes to basically do a film for every genre. The Shining was horror. Uh, Clockwork Orange, that's a good one. I like that one. Clockwork Orange was just a strange drug trip. Uh, Full Metal Jacket was the war movie. Dr. Strangelove was the uh, Adam Bomb movie. I think by the point he got to every single goddamn genre... His last movie, technically Eyes Wide Shut. I know it was technically AI, but Spielberg did that for him. But um, Eyes Wide Shut, his last movie, I think his notion was, you know what? I've done every genre imaginable. I'm going to do a porno. And that's the whole concept. Kubrick does porn. That was pretty much, that was pretty much, I think, Eyes Wide Shut. Because the, the whole movie, I'm like, what the fuck is this? What the f like, I'm so, I'm so odd. But... If I'm going to pick so far, Full Metal Jacket has been my favorite. And it's only because of... Here's how I can describe Full Metal Jacket. The entire uh, boot camp with the with the drill sergeant and Private Pyle, uh, aka Vincent D'Onofrio from Jurassic World, um, everything there was fan freaking tastic After that, when we go go to Vietnam, I feel like the movie really sucks. <laughs> because you took away the two best characters in the entire film. You took them away. And why should we care about the rest of the characters? So for me, I feel Full Metal Jacket, everything at the camp, everything at the boot camp, fantastic. Great stuff. It's pure, it's almost a comedy. It's hilarious. Because who can take, who could take uh, the drill sergeant that seriously? I know his name, I just can't say it right now but yeah the rest of the movie after that goes completely downhill and i was so shocked by that so for me i can watch everything up to that um so that's my favorite kubrick movie essentially so let me get this shot done let's see here oh uh, we want to render this as try uh three yeah we're gonna try three it's gonna render at 1080p at 60 frames a second and then uh yeah so there's the shot let's check it out hey it looks fantastic i don't know why i sound like the fonts there Sir sergeant hartman um r e r lee m -Lee. i can't say that r lee m that i can't do it today so yeah now we're gonna animate the triceratops's butt Oh, that that that's nice. That, that that's that's beautiful. Um, top ten Ray Harryhausen films. I mean, the two dinosaur movies he did are top notch. It's the One Million and Guanji. Uh, I'm really really enjoy. I really I've gone back and watched it a few more times, and I love it. The Seventh Voyage of Sinbad, just because of Bernard Herrmann's score. Love Seventh Voyage of Sinbad. Uh, Clash of the Titans, Jason the Argonauts, just for the skeleton fight. Beast from 20,000 Fathoms. Um, Mighty Joe Young, obviously. Uh, I'm trying to think of some other ones. Does a Harry Hazard film count if he makes a cameo? Because I do like the Joe 98 movie because he does make a cameo in that. Um, I, it's, it's weird because, like, I have a, I have the book Ray Harryhausen in Animated Life. It's a great uh, book about his uh, about his life story. And there's so many projects that he was gonna do that I'm really bummed out he didn't do. Like at some point, I like I want to see War Eagles. I want to see um, Creation as a movie. Will you review the Michael Bay Transformers movies? I have thought about at least taking a look at the first film because I went back and watched it again on TV over the summer, and I actually. I like, I have fun with that movie. It's the only Michael Bay movie I can really tolerate because Michael Bay makes the worst movies right now. Like, he's good at war movies. I'll say that. Like, Pearl Harbor's a piece of shit, but the whole battle, except for them shooting at civilians, great fucking sequence. Um, Armageddon's really fucking dumb. Really stupid movie. Such a dumb movie. Um, 
But yeah, Transformers, the first and third one I can tolerate, I can have fun with. The second one's fucking god-awful, and after that I just skip four and five. Um, the Benghazi movie, I thought that was actually pretty solid. See, if because Michael Bay obviously has a huge heart on, like, the U.S. military is his, essentially his porn, so I'm surprised he doesn't make more war movies involving the army. So... I'm surprised he never made the fucking Battleship movie. That would have been right up his alley. But no, no, he was busy making more Transformers movies that we didn't want. Oh, shit. Uh, so yeah, for me, that's uh, Michael Bay. All right, let's get back to the shot. Let's get back to shot shooting here. So I have to sh I have to shoot his butt. I have to shoot Billy's butt. Make of that what you will. But basically, it's uh, the shot in Power Rangers because... Um, Let's see here. We're going to flip this. Yeah, it's the shot where the the uh, the thing flips up and goes... All that shit. and get to see his big red butt right there. That's all. That's beautiful. It's a beautiful little trike butt right there. Um, Bob, Bob Shrek's like Transformers 4. Yeah, I heard it's it's better because the fucking Shia LaBeouf fuck isn't in it. But it's still... I saw... I seen it. And it just bored the hell out of me. It was way too long. It was really, really dark. Actually, darker than four because dark, like it was unpleasant to watch. Like it was just un, really inappropriate. You know, I can at least tolerate the first three being made to sell some toys, but the fourth one's not made for kids for the toys. My thoughts on Casablanca? It's my. It was my grandmother's favorite film. It is one of the greatest classics. It is one of the greatest romance films of all time. It's one of the greatest films of all time. Classic movie. Um, it's good. I, I really, I really, I try to watch it when it's on TCM. It's really the only times I watched it. But my grandmother's favorite film. And if you guys want to know a really kind of, I guess, sad story, one of my last Lego films was a Lego recreation of Casablanca that. I was making that I had planned to show to my grandmother. And right when we were finishing up, uh, she passed away. Uh, my grandmother, uh, this was around 2010. So yeah, my grandmother passed away in 2010. Literally, I think a week before delivery, like a week before we were scheduled to release it and show it to her. And that really sucked. So we actually screened the film it was a five minute film uh we screened it at her funeral and it was really it was a really beautiful moment for me it was one of the best moments for me showing my work so because it was great dedication to her so thoughts on Kong versus Godzilla being delayed um I'm actually okay with it because it gives me more time to plan out what I want to do and I don't feel pressured uh because I do I did have here's the thing I have plans to see it I have plans to review it uh, both on my own, as if I mean night or whatever, as a Kong reviews, but also uh, there we've had the oppor we have the opportunity to work with a really huge YouTuber. I'm not gonna say who it is, but um, we might be doing something there with Godzilla vs Kong. But again, no promises. But there the opera basically the opportunity the option for us is, has been offered to us, so we might take it in November. The original plan was to be March, but we're gonna go for uh, November because. That'll give us more time to uh, plan. Plus, by that point, I'll be moved. Um, I have I would have moved out. I would have been settled in, so I would have been able to find time for it. So there you go. All right, no worries, Brock. Uh, have a good day, man. We'll talk soon. All right, I'll, I might uh might Skype you or something at some point. Uh, by the way, if Nick Jackson, Sean of JT is reborn, and KPF are watching, uh, please send me a message in a group chat. Because I might have a potential little bit for you for a potential episode. So uh, hit, hit me up. Okay, so. Okay, you know what? I mean, Shy is okay. Like, he's okay. Um, I liked him in Holes, and I liked him in the first Transformers. Two and three, he's just fucking annoying. But he's done some good movies. Like, okay, I can defend him a little bit. I liked him in Eagle Eye. You guys remember Eagle Eye? I thought that was a solid movie with him. Um, he's a good actor, and he's definitely improved. But yeah, man, those at least the sequels he wasn't good. But the first Transformers movie, I can actually defend him. He's a good kid in there. 
Oh god, I would not review any Iron Man ripoffs. God no. Okay, so enough to as Arnold would say, enough talk. Funny enough, I watched Jingle All the Way last night. I like that movie! I like Jingle All the Way. I actually think it's legitimately funny, even though it suffers from Home Alone syndrome, where because I noticed this. You ever notice that every family Christmas comedy film in the 90s, especially post Home Alone, Home Alone 2 especially, um, pretty much copied it. They copied Home Alone because it's all these, you know, hilarious hijinks with, you know, getting this Christmas thing and slipping and falling with cartoon whoosh sound effects. You know, there's always that classic running and they slip and fall and they go, whew, you know, they go, woo. And they like fall like ah the reaction and the ha 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 it's funny because he failed down. I noticed that so many comedies were doing it like co Christmas comedies were doing that in the nineties, and they were suffering from Home Alone syndrome where oh Pratt fall this and that and blah blah blah. Thank you John Hughes for making everybody lazy at making Christmas movies in the nineties. Like you had that with. Homeward Bound, or not Homeward Bound, uh, 101 Dalmatians, you had that with Flubber, you had that with George of the Jungle, but that's not a holiday movie, but still suffers from sort of the John Hughes Pratt Falls slapstick comedy. Um, and I just noticed that with Jingle All the Way, it felt very, it was Home Alone, but with Arnold Schwarzenegger, but actually, but the thing that makes it funny, for me, I do like this, I do like the setup with Sinbad and him fighting over this action figure, which I don't even know, like, does anybody own a replica or a prop of Turbo, or one of the prop Turbo Man figures? Because I'm curious to see what the quality was like of that damn thing. Jake Lloyd was insufferable. I'm sorry. He was, like, he's a take, okay, I, Huey, I take back what I said about Shia LaBeouf. He's a good actor. Jake Lloyd is awful. Awful. So anyway, I have to focus on this. So, but I like Jingle All the Way, but my mom was actually watching it with me last night and she was laughing uh, at the slapstick and it was mostly because of Arnold's reactions, especially when they got all the balls. And I love that cover of it. It's the most wonderful time of the year. I don't know who sings this. I'm going to go look up the soundtrack. You know, it's the most wonderful time of the year. I love, and you know, Arnold's getting it. Like, who's the schmuck who had to bite Arnold's finger and spray, like, and, and do all that shit? So like, because can you imagine down the road that that person's like, hey, Dad, Grandpa, what did you end up doing in Hollywood? I got to beat the shit out of Arnold Schwarzenegger. How'd you do that? I bit his hand. Um, so, yeah, and I just love it. So my mom was just laughing at Arnold's reaction. So like when he's getting sprayed, uh, like pepper spray and shit, he's like, no, put it down. Ah! He got two! He got two! I love Arnold so much. He's they just he's so good. He's such an icon. You know, and the one of his best lines in, in his career. Put that cookie down! No! I, I love that movie so much. Uh are you serious? And you know, it's it's funny too, because like I'm seeing the movie, the movie's over 20, almost over 20 years old, and I'm seeing all these other toys in these actual toy stores getting trashed, and they're like vintage 90s toys, like X-Men and shit, I'm like, no, no, they're worth more men to the box, no, like my inner nerd came out, like, no, it's no longer a collectible, okay, I need to focus on this, so let's get... Let's get Billy's butt out of the way. Put that cookie down! No! <laughs> Love that movie. Alright. So, capture frame. Just gonna move. I'm gonna give it a couple of frames. Just a couple of frames here and there. Just to get it started. Not everything needs to be R-rated, Wolf Cool. Not everything needs to be R-rated. Like, Star Trek, I'm still wondering, why the fuck is that R-rated? With Tarantino involved. Do 
Johnny Mathis, thank you very much, Huey. I'm going to look up that cover now because I actually think that's my favorite cover of the song. I mean, I do have my fair share of favorite Christmas songs. Um, Silver and Gold by uh, from the original Rudolph. Really like that one. Like, that singer was great. Was it, what, Bill Winthers? I think. I don't know. I'm not 100% on that. Huey would know. Uh, but I'm trying to think of some, like some good ones. Okay, the one I love, that, again, that used in so many 90s Christmas movies, you know, uh, Dreaming of a White Christmas was the one that goes... And it's like, you know, really low pitch. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. Yeah, love that one. Um, I'm trying to think of some other ones I like. I mean, I like Run Run Rudolph, especially when you're rushing, like, around in the airport, because all I think is Home Alone. Uh, I think, like, favorite Christmas score to any film? Home Alone by John Williams. Like, John Williams, anything he makes, or he's made, because Star Wars 9 is actually going to be his last movie, is pure gold. And it's going to really suck when he's gone. I know, actually, in Toronto, there is a Home Alone uh, screening with a live orchestra. I was considering it, but I haven't had time. But I would love to... I've heard that, like, live screen, sc screening orchestras are fantastic. Are, like, fantastic uh, things to do. Uh, to do. I do enjoy the Nutcracker score. Nutcracker Sweep by uh, Tchaikovsky. Really enjoy that every time they play that kind of stuff because I don't. It's weird because people start to disregard the Nutcracker with Christmas, but as especially with a certain someone reviewing what's called Nazi Nutcracker, which was terrifying. Um, but yeah, like Nutcracker for me has always been a Christmas staple. I've always enjoyed like the story. Um, I've enjoyed. I've seen the ballet a few times. You know, I go to a couple. I go to a ballet once or twice. Nothing wrong with that. Um. But I think for me, what really stands out with me with uh, the Nutcracker, like my favorite thing about it, is um, is the plot between him and and the Rat King or the Mouse King. I don't know. Like, has there ever been a like the what is the actual canonology mytho like like of the Nutcracker? Is it the Mouse King or is it the Rat King? Because I've seen so many different versions of it, where they either call it the Mouse King or or the Rat King. It, it's really hard to tell. Uh, which is which. So now we're going to bring the tail up. I don't want to spend too many frames on this. Um, and if you're wondering what my favorite adaptations of the Nutcracker are, uh, there are a couple. Um, they're kind of odd choices. It's not the nuttiest Nutcracker, because that movie fucking sucked. Uh, and plus the CGI is terrible. I think the best in terms of story would have to be the Nutcracker Prince, which was actually produced here in Canada by Cineplex. Cineplex, the movie theater company. The same people who made Care Bears uh, in Wonderland made the Nutcracker Prince. Um, that's my favorite story version of the Nutcracker. Uh, because, and also because the cast is great. You have Kiefer Sutherland as the Nutcracker, so love that guy. Uh, you have Phyllis Diller as the Mouse Queen. She's... She... she Phyllis Diller is probably one of one of my favorite was one of my favorite comedians. Like she still is, but even though she's passed away, but I'm just getting to the point. But I really enjoyed the the rat the rat king in that one because he had a character. He had dialogue. Um I love the idea that, you know, he keeps complaining about his tail and the fight scene between him is great. Like him and the nutcracker. Like that's the one part of the movie. That's the one part of any adaptation I look forward to is that personal duel between uh, the Rat King and the Nutcracker. Like, technically there hasn't been an adaptation of the story in film that has really focused on that portion in terms of, like, a, like a major fight scene. But I would love somebody to, to do that. Like, to have a, like, do a whole adaptation, but have a whole sequence that's a classic swashbuckling sword fight scene choreograph like that Bob Anderson feel but with the Nutcracker and the Rat King I would enjoy the hell out of that um just do it all all kind of like that that'd be great um yeah yeah it's seven heads okay I want to get to that so my favorite adaptation so the Nutcracker Prince I really enjoy 
I like the Care Bears Nutcracker. And that's and the only complaint I have about that adaptation is that it's obvious that the two villains you have the uh, the Mouse King and you have the evil Vizier. They're just no heart and beastly redesigned, you know, because the the Mouse King is literally it's John Stock Stockerman who's actually a friend of mine uh, who voices Beastly in Care Bears and he uh, voices the Mouse King. And the vizier is just Jafar in a no hard cosplay. <laughs> oh my god! That's, I just made that up on the spot. That's actually really funny. The vizier in Care Bears Nutcracker is just Jafar in a no hard cosplay. <laughs> you know what the theme song you know who's that coming from somewhere up in the sky i love that shit but anyway no heart was such a dark like he was a dark like i remember the first season being really dark and then it got really more cartoony and campy i guess because kids complained that no heart was too scary but he was great probably one of the greatest cartoon villains of all time for me personally like he was great and then you had, like, Dr. Fright, who was just fucking a, a mix between Mandark and Dracula. Um, but with with the Vizier in the Care Bear special, it was just no heart. Like, why didn't why couldn't you just have no heart be part of the continuity? You didn't even need freaking to make the Vizier. And I've never seen him in any other adaptation. So, like, what's... I, I guess they were trying to go for a bit more of establishment, because... This is supposed to take place after the entire Nutcracker mythology? I guess? It's weird. It's weird how it works, but I really enjoy um, the Care Bears Nutcracker. I remember actually it was a huge event. It was the three-part series. Yeah, the three parts. This was back when kids' shows were doing like part, like like uh, episodic arcs. And like every time they went, it's like to be continued. Next time you're like, oh, shit. I remember every one of them ended on such a dark image. Like, you know, that part two, I remember scaring the shit out of me because it would just end with the vizier laughing and it would just pause on him, like, giving that, like, really scary grin. And then the Nutcracker theme would play, you bum, 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 bum. And then, like, you'd hear Braveheart going, the Care Bears Nutcracker special will be back in part three. And I'm like, you're just gonna leave us off there? What the hell, Braveheart? <laughs> so, yeah, Care Bears Nutcracker... One of my favorites. Um, I've never read that, Huey. I don't think I've ever seen that. So, third best adaptation, The Nutcracker Ballet by New York, by the New York uh, Ballet. But it was made by Warner Brothers and stars Macaulay Culkin as The Nutcracker. Now, everybody knows Macaulay Culkin, Home Alone, Richie Rich, and all that shit. If I ever met Macaulay Culkin, which so far, he's one of us now. He's one of us internet guys, and he seems like a really nice guy. I would just be like, okay, Home Alone, Richie Rich, good son, even. Fuck that. Man, we need to talk about your goddamn Nutcracker movie. <laughs> the fucking makeup. Like, dude, what was that? Like, that's what I'd be like. What was that like doing the Nutcracker, like, the ballet, the movie? Like... Because that, that's a good adaptation. Like, I think out of all the stage productions, uh, that's my personal favorite. Because, like, it's a stage production of the New York one. And you expect it to be like that when you go to a live show. But no show I've ever seen has able to top that production. And my guess is they had some Hollywood money behind it to update the sets. To make the effects look a little better. And he couldn't do that for live shows. The thing, I mean, I always, it breaks my heart to see shows, like, especially um, public, I don't know, what is it, um, community-based stage shows have a really reduced budget for stuff. 
I mean, if you gave me the, like, say a budget for a stage show, a uh, community stage show, costs like $200, I could make a convincing set of costs, like, I could make your entire costume thing for under $200. You know, but you gotta spend that on the sets. So, yeah, I, I like the Macaulay Culkin one, and I really enjoy, what's the last one I like? I know there was one more. There was one more Nutcracker movie. Um, I think it was... Shit, I gotta think about this. Because I had... Got it. And you guys will probably even not know it. Mickey's Nutcracker. It was a once aired... I think twice, maybe three times. I don't know. It was a special on the Disney Channel. Here it aired on the Family Channel in Canada. But... It was a televised uh, version of the live show of Mickey's Nutcracker that was shown at Disneyland at, in California. It was their holiday show. And it was a pretty ambitious show. Like, it had makeup. It had sets. Like, it was pretty huge. That's an, another adaptation at some point I would want to maybe talk about. Because it's weird. Because I remember the one part that was really great about that uh, that special and that show was the narrator. Because the narrator had his own set, his own booth in the live show at Disneyland. And he would just be like, you know, hello and welcome to Mickey's Nutcracker. I'm the narrator. Or, yeah. And what I love, I always love uh, what Disney does whenever they have a narrator. And they constantly break the fourth wall. Like Winnie the Pooh did does that great. George of the Jungle does that a lot. But I absolutely love them. So with the, yeah with Mickey's Nutcracker, it's funny because it's got it's funny because there's a there's a version of uh, I think I can't remember what the name of it. It's one of the Tchaikovsky tracks, but it's where the the Mouse King comes up from the sewer. So they're like Ninja Turtles now, and when they play they play that that bit of Tchaikovsky, it's got this great like heavy metal guitar cover of it, and I'm like that is badass. I, I want that raw track. It's it's great. I love it. Um, because you know, the, I can't remember which track it is, but it's like you know, do 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 do. But in this one, it's like heavy metal. It's like it's so cool. But anyway, so to the point, the narrator. I later found out after finding the 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 special on YouTube, the guy has a YouTube channel. And it turns out he's kind of a government conspiracy guy. <laughs> you never expect this innocent thing from Disney. This fucking narrator of Mickey's Nutcracker. <laughs> to be a government conspiracy person. <laughs> and given Disney now, I wonder what he has to say. Oh my god. Okay, I'm going off track. I gotta finish this shot. Let's, 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 as, as the Red Ranger would say, Tommy, can this bitch. Oh, God. That's so funny. That's hilarious. Oh, shit. Almost lost my keyboard. <laughs> um, want to watch a Nutcracker movie? Watch Nutcracker the motion picture. If it's anything like Star Trek the motion picture, um, I might pass, but just as long as it's not boring. I hate it when I hate a movie that bores me, honestly. Okay, so let's get you done, buddy. The problem is, is I have to lift his tail slightly. The thing is, his joint's a little loose, so I have to just be very careful. Oh shit. To go back a frame there. Can we delete that frame, please? There we go. Now he's up here. Get a bit more, get more up on his bit. And there we go. Right, let's check that shot. Yeah, it looks awesome. Sweet. Okay, so we're going to edit in timeline. 
the CDI cell. What? I'm doing good. Uh, I'm doing good, Wolf Cool. Um, nobody 23. Uh, we are doing stop motion for my Power Rangers review. In case you're wondering, we just got off track talking about Christmas specials because it's the holiday season. So why the fuck not? So we're going to get that shot. You guys want to see the shot? I'll get the shot in a sec. So we were just doing the stop motion animation on this uh, classic Triceratops Zord from Money Morphin Power Rangers. That's what we're looking for. Um, are looking forward to the Snake Eyes new G.I. Joe movie. Is that live action? Because they've been in limbo for a couple of years now, and I doubt they're ever going to make another one. All right, so let's import this sucker, and then I'll show you guys the shot. Try three. We're going to go to call this Tri... Triforce? My boy. Oh, fuck. It's funny. So we're going to let that render, and I'll show you guys the shot in a sec. Merry Christmas to you, too, uh, man. Uh, happy holidays to everybody as well. Hope everybody has a really good Christmas this year. Um, people are asking me what, I, what, I, what I've been wanting for Christmas this year. Um, I already got pretty much the two main things. First of all, got a new chair. That was on my list because my other one broke. And the other thing is, is the monitor I'm using for this animation because I do need a small monitor for um, travel in case I'm traveling. If I'm on vacation, I have my tower with me. I can have something to edit on. So let's see here. So there's there's the shot. All good to go. So let's play it back and let's see how it looks. Yeah. That's like some transformer shit right there. Sorry about that. We, um... A little bit offline there. My apologies. I don't know how that happened. Anyway, so there it is. Da -da 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 -da. Really, really cool right there. There's there's the shot. So now we're going to go on to the next shot. Let me just check my shot list here. So anyway, so yeah, I needed a new monitor and I needed a new chair for Christmas. So, oh, I'm great at stop motion. Uh, stop motion was my thing since I was, uh, since I really got into it on YouTube. I uh, used stop motion on my Kong remake a lot with the uh, the dinosaurs, and uh, obviously dinosaur stop motion is my hundred is my is my best talent honestly, and you know doing all this stuff again, also rebuilding my Legos. It's as one person asked this question early in the stream is if I would ever get back into uh, stop motion Legos again, and I've thought about it. I kind of want to. It would just be something I'd have to do on my spare time, and they just come out when they come out. But yeah. Uh, if you want to know my thoughts on the new Ghostbusters, uh, go check out my recent reaction video I posted yesterday, I think. It's hard to keep track. So, um, also, for anybody who's wondering how I'm able to keep track of shots, I have myself a little shot list. And they're all colored and everything to know which Zor to use and which effects to do. And I check mark everything, everything I shoot, essentially. So that way I can keep track and I don't have to reshoot something. So we got the shot there and we got the shot of it roaring. And then we got the shot of the tail folding back. Now, are there any more shots of this Triceratops? I am not seeing any. I think we might be clear on Triceratops footage. I think. Yes, we are. Little trikey's done to lean in for the group shot. So, who's next? You wonder. Well, I'm gonna say given she's easy to do, um, we're gonna move on to the pterodactyl because I think that would just be a little bit easier to do. Um, because one, we can do it in some stop motion, and some of it we can do with uh, on strings, and that'll be kind of fun. So we're gonna do is the first shot we're going to do is a very simple one. Uh, here is the pterodactyl. Uh, the pterodactyl Zord, uh, Kimberly used, uh, the Pink Ranger, uh, Amy Jo Johnson, respectively. And wow, we're an hour in. And yeah, she basically just flies this thing, and all it does is just fly into the chest of the Zord. So one thing I'm going to do is we're going to just do that. Um, where are we going to see uh, opening night of the race of Skywalker on the night it comes out? Me and the guys have been planning this for a couple times, and you're going to be seeing a review of that. Any planned when it gets a million subs? That's far away, man. I don't know what I'll be doing for that. I'll be doing like a party or something. Uh, how much time do you have left? Um, I'm pretty much here for a little bit more. Uh, I'm going to show you guys a few more shots. I might continue this another like another day. 
uh, to show you guys more of the stop motion process, but um, I definitely want to keep these. I definitely want to keep doing these. So I, I'm willing to go a little bit longer if you guys would like. So yeah, we're going to do a pterodactyl. So the first shot I think is going to be easy because it's just uh, it kind of rising up, like kind of like a, like the Star Wars crawl. So I'm thinking the best way to shoot this. So we just do it kind of like... Yeah, it's going to be a little difficult to do in this manner. So... Well, I'm thinking the best thing to do is do it in kind of the style of Star Wars, where they shoot it with the camera. So how I'm thinking about doing this is, actually, that would do right there. Actually, fuck, that's perfect. So we're going to basically lay it on its side. And what I'm going to do is detach the camera, like so. And we're just going to shoot it. Kind of like, you know, a, a, a model in Star Wars where they just, they move with the camera and not the model itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring it down very slightly, very slight shots, all right? Let's just make this quick. Here we go. Perfect. That's one shot done. See, pterodactyl is really easy to do. So that way you can just... Now, I'm going to actually do the next shot, which is her head. So, yeah, it's just a very slight little... It's almost like a crane. So I'm thinking... What's the, whoop, what? Oh, there she goes. Kimberly, no! Oh, God! Tommy, save her like you do in every other episode! Because that was back when damsel and distress stress were still a thing. So I'm thinking I'm just going to kind of have it where... I'm actually going to bring the camera up. We're all still here. We're all in this together. Uh, any updates on the Star Wars prequel reviews? Um, We're kind of taking a little bit of a break, but we're going to be shooting some winter elements uh, over the holiday season and in January uh, because we want to shoot on other planets, so we do want to get a snow planet in there. So... Uh, but in terms of release, uh, I won't be till season five. We're still in season four. Let's see here. Can we get a bit more in focus on this guy? Uh, come on, come on, buddy. Please, can you focus? Come on. Da, 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 da. There we go. Okay, yeah, we got it. We got it. We got it. We got it. Okay. There's the shot. So I'm going to do this in stop motion. So the first thing I should do is probably stable it, put her down and kind of lock her down so she doesn't like move around too much. So we're going to go to here and I got to get some tape. So the best thing to use so you don't damage your little Bristol board green screen, sculpt a uh, paint, wall paint tape is your best, is your best bet because you can just double side it. And then just kind of lock it down, and you don't have to worry about damaging it. Just rip it off really slowly. So, I'm just going to take this. My only concern is the de decals on, on her, because these are vintage decals. So, I just want to be super careful with that. There we go. And we want to place her, which can be seen, like that. There we go. Okay. So... We have her in place, all looking great. Did you see the Walmart ad that had all the movie cars pulling up? What? Oh yeah, I've seen that. It was okay. It was all right. Um, do you wish there was an anime of Godzilla versus King Kong? Nah, Kong, yes. As an adaptation of the film and anime, yes. But versus Godzilla, nah, nah. Not really, my, not really my style. So, I want to say it kind of starts like this. It's got a couple of frames in there. I'm going to slightly just move her head very slightly. So, again, this is stop motion where you move it, you take a picture, you move it, you take a picture. I want to just adjust the light a little bit so you guys can see what I'm doing. Is that too, no, that's too dark. Let's... uh. Let's keep it where is that? About right there. Just 
slightly very slightly back a little bit scout Very, very easy process, very focused process. What would you like to do if they asked you to make a G.I. Joe movie? I don't know. Just make it good. Make it like the cartoon. I mean, Retaliation was the closest thing. Honestly, I'm kind of done with G.I. Joe. Actually, you know what was the best G.I. Joe movie, except for the cartoon? It was uh, the Epic Saga by the Fine Brothers, and that was before they were, like, PC family-friendly YouTube stuff. It was pretty pretty harsh comedy, not gonna lie. And they actually got kicked out by because Hasbro actually uh, put a cease and desist on them after they finished the series. It's the same way they did their Lost series from from long ago. If you guys are old enough to remember the early days of YouTube and the internet, it's gonna very slightly make her head put into lock. Worst animated shows of 2010. Um, I really can't decide that because I really don't care about today's kids' shows. I really don't. They are not my thing. Bumblebee was basically the G1 cartoon. Yeah, and that's what I heard. I heard it was fantastic. And I do want to see it, Huey. Like, I heard it's really good. Kind of locker like that. And one more frame. Go to that. Let's go eight. Let's go eighteen because that's my lucky number. And we're gonna edit the timeline. Yeah, okay. Let's see what we got. Okay. Oh, it looks so good. Oh, it looks so good. <laughs> looks beautiful. I'll show you guys the shot in a sec. Let me just render it. 1080. There we go. Uh, so any questions, guys? Any little comments? Thomas Jane should have played Duke. SR 2010 movies are your faves and least says. Favorite 2010 movies. From 2010 to 2019. Well, Shirley G was pretty solid. I mean, minus the third one feeling rushed as hell. Uh, the Force Awakens was great. Rogue One was the better Star Wars of the Disney era. Jurassic World was a welcome return to the franchise, even though Five sucked. I could say, if anything, this decade has been the decade of nostalgia. More so than the, 20, the 2000s. Because this is more like, I think for us, 2010 to 2019 was the second coming of the 90s. The 90s made a full comeback, in my opinion. And because of that, some franchises have been good, some have suffered. Um, I can't really, there's not really many, I can't think of all the best movies I saw this year, or this decade. Um, really only franchise movies that I really cared about. So Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, um... Last few Terminators haven't been as... I mean, I know Dark Fate. I changed my mind on it. Genesis was the worst, but Salvation was still the better 2000 sequel. That was 2008. Um, we saw the end of Batman with uh, The Dark Knight Rises. We saw a rebirth of Batman for a very short period of time. Uh, the Marvel movies have taken pretty much taken over, too, so... Yeah, there's not really films that stand out on their own, essentially. Uh, I think Kong Skull Island was one of my favorites of, of the decade. Because uh, that was just really good welcome return to Kong. So I'm going to show you guys a shot. Hopefully this doesn't crash on me again. Uh, Labyrinth. Oh, I love Labyrinth. Remember the 80s cartoon, The Raccoons? Ah, of course, it's getting rebooted. I'll have to talk to my friend Susan about that. So here's the shot. Yeah, that looks awesome. And it goes, eh. 
You don't want to see Dark Fate? Is it because the internet bitched about it too much? And I and I was part of the problem. I apologize, Huey. Um, again, I gave it a second watch. I just accepted it for what it was. It wasn't anything special. It just, it just wasn't a thing. It just wasn't a thing, man. I'm sorry. The, the, the Terminator movies have just not been good. Ever seen Police Story? No, I'm not the biggest Jackie Chan fan. Aside from Jackie Chan Adventures. That show kicked ass. And I did like the Karate... I actually did like the Karate Kid remake. I thought he was good in that. Only thing missing is that if he had been Mr. Miyagi. Turn out those head jiggles. Yeah, well, it's stop motion. It's supposed to have a little jiggle effect, son of a bitch. Um, it's supposed to have a little bit of a jiggle effect. So the next shot we're going to do... This is a fun one. You guys are going to get a fun one this time. We're going to have the pterodactyl fly off from the volcano. So what we're going to do here is... This is a very cool way to do it. We're going to do it with wires. So what I have here... This is a pretty cool thing. So what I have here is... Um, I have this old, like, fishing line wire ceiling hedge thing that was used for an old, uh, toy dollar store helicopter. And it has this really nice hook, and we were going to use these on Kong, we never did. However, um, I still kept these because I do like the, this, like, kind of wire effect thing here. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this on the pterodactyl. And I got to figure out how the hell I'm going to be doing that. And hooking this up to it. So I did have a way of doing it. The only problem is, is I'm gonna have to use duct tape. Maybe I just wanna I just wanna make sure it looks good before I before I set it up. Because I'm either thinking it's gonna be motion controlled, like camera controlled, or it's gonna be um myself controlling it. I think it would just look cooler if it was myself, but I don't want it jiggling too much. So what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is I have one of my shelves here. I'm going to duct tape this damn thing to it very tightly. And we're going to just basically have this thing hung on this on the shelf like so. There's no, yeah, there's plenty enough. There's plenty enough feet. Plenty enough room. And we're just going to carefully... Please forgive the... Uh, Crudeness of this angle right now. I'm just trying to get this Terry Terry up here. Terry wants to go back to Pee Wee's Playhouse. Do go inside and play with me now. I, I never grew up with Pee Wee, but I know mostly about it. <laughs> I mean, Pee Wee's. I mean, Pee Wee's cool. Everybody likes Pee Wee, even if he did do that shit in the movie theater. But who cares? It's, could have been a worse offense, to be fair. So, there it is. So it's there hung up like that on a little wire. Thoughts on Pippi Longstocking? I really enjoyed the cartoon. The cartoon was a great thing. And also the movie that started the cartoon. Um, really enjoyed that shit. That was my jam growing up. Um, the songs were great. That's a movie I wouldn't mind covering at some point. Cause, and that was all Canada. I believe that was all Canadian. Was uh, the Pippi Longstocking uh, TV ser animated series. Okay, so the problem is she's hanging a little low. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to uh, fix this up. So I'm thinking the best way to do that. Uh, hmm. I'm thinking we just tape her back. But the thing is i got to be careful with the decals. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to use uh, that tape. I'm going to use very slight duct tape. Play tra trail on Facebook. I'll check it out after the live stream, Huey. Canadian horror movies I like. Um, I can't think of any off the top of my head that were Canadian. Because there's not, I don't know, that many Canadian horror films. Unless you count Orca, but that was like a Hollywood production that was shot in Canada. Um, not 100% on that. Okay, so we are going to have her kind of attached like so I just gotta be careful I gotta be super careful this is very important I focus on this guys so apologies if I'm not 
focusing on you guys right now. But since she's already strapped in, I gotta make sure she's gonna be okay. So what I'm gonna do very slightly. Take that. Hold what you got, guys. Hold what you got. Oh, son of a bitch. This is a very tense process. Okay, duct tape there. Now, will she stand or will she float? We might need more duct tape. Just a little bit more, just to secure her, just to make sure she doesn't fly off. Literally. Think. Oh, she's a little bit sideways. Shit. Maybe if we could we did that work? <gasps> Wait! Oh eh, I think I got it! Think I got it! Think I got it! Think I got it. Think I, I think I can, I think I can, as the little engine that could would say, which I love that fucking movie too. Don't make me cry over that. I love that movie. <laughs> okay, so we're just gonna let that do its thing for a teeny bit just let it let settle and we're gonna wait but if you guys want to see what it looks like there you go actually let me just flip it there you go so we're just gonna wait for this to settle until it's in the right position and then we're just gonna kind of do like a little forced perspective shot i think that would look a lot better because this is how they did in star wars you know it's just um so while we're waiting i'll answer a few questions i'm kind of uh Give you guys a little, maybe I'll give you guys a little preview of what's to come on this Power Rangers thing. So what I'll do is I'll just shut down for now, kind of get a little bit more, a little bit more quiet here. If is Godzilla vs Kong your most anticipated film in 2020? Pretty much. I can't really think of any other movies I'm looking forward to next year. There's not much left, to be honest. So we got the pterodactyl shot. So I want to check. I want to show you guys some of the shots I'm working on. I was going to say that the light next to you makes you look heavenly. Aw, thank you. You know, I may not be a heavenly person. I mean, I've done enough to go to hell, but thank you. I appreciate that. Just, oh. By the way, guys, uh, if you want to support my channel, again, uh, link down below to my Patreon. Just a dollar or more. Early access to all of our content as well as other special features. And if you want to mail us, uh, you can do so at Big Jack Films, PO Box 326, Queensville, Ontario, L0G1R0. Donations, gifts, Christmas presents, you know, whatever you, you know, and just questions or comments or fan letters. I uh, would love to hear from you. And speaking of fan mail, I almost forgot about this. We got fan mail! So this is the perfect opportunity to do this while we're waiting for this thing to settle. And it looks like we're settling it the right way. So, this is from, let's see, this question. I was going to say the light makes it, um, hey, 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 it's Ras Duke. Um, so, we got a little bit of fan mail here. It's from Ramsey, uh, from, uh, I don't even know where he's from, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah, this is from my fan name Ramsey, so we're just going to open this up. And like I say... Hopefully it is not anthrax, <laughs> which would be terrible. I'd be like, ah, ah, they're after me. It's like, run for it. <gasps> Ramsey, Ramsey, come on, man. Okay, whoever Ramsey is, thank you. I'm going to read his letter, but God damn. <sighs> Dude, thank you. Thank you so much. So this is from Ramsey. And I don't know if we've ever gotten him before. Henry Mockingbird on YouTube. Okay, so you've been one of our guys on our streams. Okay, buddy. So I'll show you what he said in a sec, but I want to read his letter. Um, Holy shit. Um, I think some of it actually got maybe. Okay, here. So it's a very short letter, but this is from Henry Mockingbird on YouTube. Again, thank you so much, buddy. 
Dear Jack, my name is Ramsey Ali, but you, my YouTube name is Henry Mockingbird. A review, I review classic movies on YouTube, and I want to personally thank you for getting me into movie reviews. If it not for you and James Rolfe, angry video game nerd, uh, I would have never have started reviewing movies for myself. I also want to thank you for opening my eyes and seeing movies like Jaws, Star Wars, and Jurassic Park. I'm enclosing this. I'm enclosing a small token of my appreciation. It is money to help with your projects and reviews. Best regards, Ramsey. Ramsey was kind enough. Send us a send us a little little bit of a donation, twenty dollars American, which here in Canada comes up to twenty five. Ramsey, thank you so much. Really appreciate it, man. This is gonna go towards future projects for sure. Um, and we really appreciate it, man. Like like every donation, every letter we get, uh, we can't thank you enough. So, man, like. At first, I was thinking the writing was a little, but you know what? Type letters I like more because it's a bit more professional. Although I like the handwritten ones. It's just great to get some. I love getting stuff from fans. It's absolutely fantastic. But again, thank you so much, Ramsey. This is going to go towards, you know, our, our essentially our budget costs for projects that we have planned. Um, which I got to figure out what, what next. Because like, the obviously the next one after Power Rangers is Batman. But... Yeah, we're definitely gonna we're definitely gonna like have this on hand. So thank you so much, Ramsey. You're too kind. Uh, big shout out to him. What's his What's his YouTube channel? I'll put it at the end. Uh, Henry Mockingbird, guys, go subscribe to Henry Mockingbird. He does movie reviews and stuff. Uh, thank you so much, man. Really appreciate it. So, uh, Terry has settled. Would you be pissed if they remade Jaws and used, and even if they use practical shark effects? I'd be upset that they're remaking it, but one if they're closer to the novel and they're using practical effects and gave a different interpretation? I'm okay with that. As long as you don't use the score and you make it your own thing. And don't try to CG it. If you CGI it, you fucked it. Because I'm, CGI shark movies are just... They're, they're just trash. CGI shark movies nowadays are the equivalent of a of used condoms. They're worthless. They've been used. They're disgusting. They ain't worth shit. That's how I can describe them. And they're just gross. Can you review more TV shows like Caillou? No! Okay. As a Canadian, I apologize for the Hell we brought on this planet. The hell spawn. The Rosemary's Baby of children's cartoons. That is Caillou. Because that was Canadian. And I apologize for that, guys. Uh, from uh, As a Canadian, I apologize. You guys did not deserve that chemotherapy of a bastard child. <laughs> and his stupid fucking cat Gilbert. His whining sister Rosie. His parents, who I swear to God, they're gonna, they, they, I'm, how the fuck have they not gotten divorced yet over this little shit? No lessons, nothing. Granted, the first season, as far as, because I was there when it started on Teletoon, it was at least tolerable because there was at least the grandmother who narrated, who told the kids stories, so there was some sort of moral. But after that, man. Caillou was fucking shit. Caillou was cancer. Literally. Just, and I thought Charlie Brown had it bad. Fuck, terrible show. I apologize. I am not touching, like, I am not reviewing Caillou. Fuck that. Fuck that shit. Okay. So I just want to adjust, uh, Terry a little bit. Just going to kind of show you what we're doing here. So you can see... She's facing the green screen. She's supposed to face this way. We're just going to kind of adjust her a little, little, little bit. Turn, 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 baby. Oop, oop, stop, 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 stop. Can you stop? Can you stop? We're going to have to hold there. You're going to have to... Kimberly, you're going to have to stop right there, buddy. You're going to have to stop. You're going too far. You're going too far. We're going to have to stop. Good. Okay, stay. Stay, Kimberly. Stay. Good. Okay. 
So here's the shot that we're working on. So it's just simply pterodactyl going and just flying past camera. So where we're going to do this, we are going to shoot this by uh, filming it with uh, the base camera, which is, uh, if I can flip my goddamn camera back, I'm going to use this sucker, which is the Sony Handycam uh, HDD 1080p. Uh, I've been using this one for a while. I got it at a pawn shop for like 50 bucks, which was pretty cool. So we're going to use this, and we're going to basically... I'm going to try to show you guys how we shoot this so you can get a little bit more of a behind-the-scenes kind of feel to it. So you're getting a little bit more camera angles. Whoa! Um, so let's just get it to where you guys can see the, the magic. The magic of the island of Sodor, of Big Jack Films Predictions. Just don't want you guys to fall. Please don't fall. Please don't fall. Be a dick. Camera. Oh, I know. I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm an idiot. I should have thought of this. I'm a place, y'all. Fuck. There. Oh, 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 oh. Good. Oh, shit. You can't say it. Son of a bitch. It's too low. God damn it. Just a little bit lower. Get there. Can you guys see it? Let's see. Hey, you can see it. Okay. So, we're going to detach the camera. And I just want to make sure it looks good. Because we want to make it look as smooth as possible. So, we're just going to wait for this sucker to turn on. Okay. So, yeah, it looks good. The frame, weight, the frame looks good. I just want to maybe adjust the lighting a little bit so it looks a little bit brighter. Um, a bit more, a bit more of a brightness tone. That that that's a little bit better for the green. But I don't want to make it too bright on the on the wings. I'm also gonna kind of brighten it up here. Maybe like light it up a bit higher up, like a bit more of a tilt. Oh, that's gonna hold though. I'm just going to brighten the light the left light here a little bit more. There we go. So you can see. Oh, yeah. That looks way better. Ish. Hopefully, this, this does not affect the green screen in the shot. So the way this works is we are just going to take Mr. Terry. I'm over here, guys. I'm just shooting with the camera. We're basically... I wonder if I can... I can't really get an angle on this side, unfortunately. So I'm just going to get this shot. I'm just going to angle it right. I might have to move the monitor a little bit to the side. So don't, please don't knock down the camera. Thank you. And yeah, we're just going to get this shot. I'm just going to move Mr. Tyrannosaur, Mr. Trey, and Mr. Masty right there. Yeah, there's a shot. Oh, shit. Wait, did we lose light? Oh. We lost a little light there, but I think we're going to be okay. So let's get this shot. Honestly, I wish the pterodactyl was a bit more there, but we can do with what we got. So anything, I can, I can probably crop out the rest later. So here goes the shot. Actually, you know what? Uh, yeah, here's there's the frame. There's the Okay, we got the frame. Sorry. Just had to find a better frame. Okay. So let's see this sucker go. Actually, hmm. I'm trying to think if I should... I want to try to give you guys a better angle of this. Because I want to show you guys kind of the magic of um, how this works. Now, can you see... Can't see Terry there, son of a bitch. This is the problem, because what happened was my tripod stand, like, snapped. And I was so pissed today that my, my uh, phone stand snapped. So I got to get a new one. They're easy to find. Thank, thank goodness. Okay, you do not want to cooperate, Mr. Phone. You do not want to cooperate and give me a good shot, do you? Nope. Well, fuck you then. Is it upside down? I don't fucking do. It's fine. Oh, 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 I, I think we got, okay. I think we're good. I think we're good. Now you can see the magic happen. Now you can see me at work. Oh, oh, don't. Oh, shit. Okay. Now she. Now she's bumping. Now she's bumping. Now she's bumping. No, 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 no. You just 
We're still, honey. You were just still. Okay. So we're going to have to wait for this thing to slow down a little bit. Unfortunately, I cannot read my comments from this angle. So we're going to have to hold. I mean, I can't. If I move this, this whole thing's going to fall off. Yep. Oh, fuck. There, there it goes. There goes the light. Some bitch. Ah, some bitch. Ah. I feel like Dick's a hazard. Like, ah. Ah. Son of a bitch. Ah. Okay. Let's scooch you all that. You guys are getting a lengthy one on this one, aren't you? Um. Can't really angle it here. Because I want to show you guys how this is all working. It's just a little difficult to get the right angle to show you guys. How's the battery on this thing? Battery's pretty good, so maybe I can plug it there. Let me just check. I got a couple messages. Holy shit. Yeah, I had to shut down Messenger for a little bit because it was just getting annoying. Um. Whoa! Let's go to this side a little bit, maybe. Just place you up where the Zords are. Nope, that won't do. What the fuck? Sorry, I just, I'm trying to find a good behind the scenes angle for you guys. You guys see the magic at work. Because magic is key. Dance magic, dance. Okay, so Terry's right here. She's pretty stable. So I'm gonna show you guys how we do this shot. She's pretty stable. So we're gonna get this shot nice and steadily done. And here we go. So anything, so basically, you can see the monitor, you can see this, it's pretty cropped. But, um, I wonder if I could, can I show the monitor on here? If I, well, that takes away from some of the lighting, unfortunately. Unless we brighten her up. We take that out. Yeah, you guys can't see the monitor. I don't, like, you can see the shot later. Anyway, so we're going to get this shot. And we're going to make it very quick. Just want to get a bit more lighting on her. So this is, this is how they do shots in Star Wars. Star Wars, they would normally use a dolly to kind of pan in on it. But because we're kind of running out of time, we got to do this kind of handheld. But I think it just kind of adds a bit more of that model charm to it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to slightly just blow. So like blowers, not in that way. But to get that kind of on a different angle. That's right, that's right. Trying to, it's like using the force. Da, na, 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 na. Ah, it's working. I'm using the force. Da, na, 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 na. Look at that. I'm using the force. This is amazing. Don't use the force. Okay, she's good. All right, here we go. Here's the shot. Let's do this. Let me just make sure anything cropped. I can maybe, yeah, I can maybe do. Okay, here we go. Okay, she bl she blew off. Try this again. Come on, Kimberly, you can do this. You go. There we go. Okay, okay. Let's do this. Ready? Ready? Oh, oh, no, no, no. Don't go the other way. Don't go too far. Don't go too far, Kimberly. And here we go. Let's do one more pass. Yeah, there's just too much shit in the way. Unfortunately, if I just kind of block it off, let's uh, just her down slightly, just a little bit. Okay, so we're going to have to hold again. So this is the process with wiring. Sometimes wiring is such a pain in the ass you don't want to do it because if it's on, we're only using one wire. So unfortunately, she's just having troubles. I'm trying to use the force. Yeah, it, it's... M Matt, if you've ever done stop motion, try to do stop motion uh, pterodactyls, it's not fucking easy, man. It's really hard to do these. Like, I don't, I don't know how Harry House did it. It's really difficult. So, for me, it's like, yeah, we're just going to wait for her to adjust a little bit. But basically, like, it's... So, with stop motion, you know, models and using wire stuff the the one i knew that amateur film amateur filmmakers the reason it's so difficult go look up uh the 1985 documentary dinosaurs that aired on television it was narrated by christopher reeve 
And one of my favorite segments in that show is where they cut to an elementary school uh, doing dinosaur stop motion projects on par with Harryhausen. And they're using uh, modeling clay and uh, Super 8 film. Because uh, this was back in 85 before home video was really a big thing. Like beta cameras and like VHS cameras and shit. So I remember like what is it? They're showing how they're sculpting it. And, you know, Christopher Reeve is like, the teaching about dinosaurs is much more, is much less limited to just book reading and museum trips. Kids have more fun modeling clay and making movies. See, I love, like, that was kind of my first insight in seeing how I could do that kind of stuff. But with that documentary, I saw these kids. My guess is they were trying to do stop motion with a, a clay pterodactyl on a wire that was attached, like, on a fishing line that was attached to a ruler. And it was trying to land on this volcano set with a little blue screen. And you could tell the kids were having a real problem with that. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's one of my favorite episodes too. But yeah, like I'm so glad you brought that up. So they're trying to do this damn thing on this fucking like paper mache volcano. And the damn thing's not working, especially if it's stop motion. So in that sense, you might as well say fuck it. You pull the trigger and you just have it land like a fucking wired like dinosaur like a marionette i find marionette pterodactyls are my favorite uh i remember i, I remember was it uh kinder we have uh kinder eggs here in canada it's not it's not like it's banned in the u.s but they have the big kinder chocolate eggs and i remember one time i got this really cool blue pterodactyl that you assemble and it was a puppet on strings and it was a pterodactyl and movements and everything and i was going to use this thing and then i lost it i was so upset but marionette pterodactyls are the way to go with that kind of shit. So for me, it's like, I mean, I look at like Dactar in uh, Runaway Reptar. That's kind of how they did it there in that, in that spoof of Toho films. That's actually one of my, probably my favorite Godzilla parody or spoof to, on television was Runaway Reptar. Because it was not only a loving tribute to uh, Showa Godzilla films, it was also a tribute to uh, one of my favorite Godzilla movies, which is the original Godzilla vs. Uh, Mechagodzilla. Uh, down to the bad dubbing. It was great. You know, like, like what's the, like, there's, like, they have the, like, Daktar attacks Tokyo, and it's a marionette, and it's smashing the styrofoam building, and it's like, oh no, a horrible monster is invading Japan. What do you think it could be, Professor? If I wasn't seeing this with my own eyes, I'd never believe it. It appears that Daktar, the pterodactyl, has been snatched from the Tarpaya tar pits and has found his way to Tokyo, and has begun to destroy beachfront property. And he's, like, moving all his lips, like, oh, great. Foos, I lose my car keys, and now this. We have got to do something. And that's how one guy goes, yeah. And it's like, and it's like, it's too late, my friends. I'm afraid Tokyo is doomed. I don't know why. It was just such a great tribute to that, to uh, Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla. You could tell the writers and the creator of Rugrats really enjoy those. So I love that. That's probably one of my favorite Rugrats episodes. If I ever did like a top 10 favorite Rugrats episodes, that's in the top 10. Because that's just probably, for me, the definitive Reptar episode. Because Reptar was always my favorite character on Rugrats. Like, what's your favorite? Let me know in the comments. What's your favorite Reptar episode on Rugrats? Because I can only think of a few. Reptar on Ice. Uh, Incident on Isle 7 with Reptar Serial. Um... The first the, when they go the first season when they go to the movies and they see the first Reptar movie Reptar twenty ten which was obviously a nod to Godzilla eighty five. Um, there was things like uh, was it um, Runaway Reptar obviously Reptar Junior, which was this toy Reptar was obviously a spoof of Godzilla uh, Minya Godzilla's son. Um, will I review the Grinch movie maybe someday? Somebody yeah, what's a dinosaur to do when there's kids on the ice? Please, somebody call their mom. I know there's a Reptar inflatable costume, like the fucking T-Rex ones. I kind of want that, and I kind of want to go ice skating as Reptar. Reptar seemed like an, a more American creation before Runaway Reptar was... Yeah, like, that's the thing. Like, But the thing is, Reptar in Rugrats was meant to represent the Godzilla series. Because um, Rugrats started in 91. Runaway Reptar didn't start until... That episode didn't air. It was a two-part episode. I remember it clearly when it aired on Nickelodeon. It was a two-part epic. And it was... Um, it was essentially a big special. And it was like around the time Dill showed up. 
And 98, 98 was. So obviously they knew. So maybe it was also a homage to the Godzilla film saying, here's something better than Godzilla 98. But yeah, like with the, I felt like Runaway Reptar in terms of episodes, which is a great tribute to the Showa Godzilla films, as well as Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla being the main one, uh, essentially. So let's try to get this shot finally. And hopefully Kimberly does not fuck it up. If you do the thing, and you do it right, and you don't fuck it up, it works. It just works. Let's be very, very careful. I want to be very, very quiet. We're hunting pterosaurs. <laughs> okay, let's do this for real. All right. Again, any cropping I can fix. All right. Here we go. We'll do, let's do it in reverse. See if we can do one in a pass, like a reverse. Actually, that might look a lot better if we do it in reverse. I'll just do one more forward pass. Excellent. So I think what we're going to do next, we're going to actually do another shot to make it a little easier. We're going to do a shot of it coming in. So the way I'm thinking about doing this, if I could kind of tighten it a little bit. We're going to have it where it's going to be that one where the kind of pterosaur kind of goes like that. So we're going to make that look good. So I'm going to shoot it like this. Okay, that looked good. I want to do one more because I know how to angle it. Let me just do some tests. It's about moving. Right. It's about moving the camera. Right, let's do it in reverse. Just trying to get that. There we go. I like that. I'm trying to do a bit of a tilt. Must be more. I think it's more. Yeah, it's, uh, it's that side. Okay, okay. So I got to tilt the. I know how to tilt the camera. Okay. I got this. Okay, I think I got this. I think we got the shot. I think we're going to be okay. And then I also get a quick shot of it kind of just flying in place so we know where to put the, the dinosaurs in later. So I'm just going to try to get this to where it's a bit more a bit more in full in frame. So This is kind of a fun way of doing motion control. And then, see, I'm thinking, I'm also thinking ahead in case we need any more shots of the pterosaur, like for a future project or something. So I'm just trying to get as many shots as I possibly can with this, just to make it look kind of cool. So let's say there's a space battle. You never know if you need a space battle with this thing. Sometimes I get some extra shots so I know what I'm doing. Oh, I got one. I got one. Oh, I got one. Okay, I think that should do for now. I think we should be okay. So Terry's good. I think should we do a side one? Let's do a side one just in case we're going to slightly move her to the side. So again, you never know. The world may never know about the Titsy Pops.
just gonna let that adjust for a little bit. So I think we got those shots. Let me check my shot list and see what the hell we're doing. See, the thing is, once you start getting into the behind the scenes process and how I do it, and I'm not as talkative, it is very boring. So I don't blame you guys if some of you bail, which is all good. Got that, got that, got that. So I'll do, uh, we got turn on flying past camera. Just wanna make sure that's it for Terry. Terry's all good. And that's all it for Terry. We just gotta get some side shot. We'll just get a side shot and then we're gonna call that a day. So I just wanna make sure she adjusts properly. Where she, the question is where she's gonna land. Where's she gonna kind of sit around in? Uh, stop, stop Terry. I tried making my own reptile movie as a kid, but it took a while. And, uh, sorry, just the comments go by pretty quickly. Come on. Come on, Terry. Stop being stop being a bitch. Just, see, it's all about waiting for this thing to get into the right position. That's the only thing about doing wire work, unfortunately. If you're wondering about the sound, it's just the garage. My parents are coming home, so I'm probably going to wrap this up soon. But I just want to see you guys get this get this last shot, at least. And there is one more shot I got to do, but I got to do it on my own stop motion. Stop. Can you stop, please, Terry? We'd really appreciate it. Thumbs up and get thumbs up and this thing will stand still. <laughs> Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. <laughs> come on, Terry. Come on. Stop. Please stand. Please. 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 Please stand. Please, Terry. Please. We need you. We need you here now. Please. You two next time. Sounds to me like you're animating my film back then. Okay, I think we're good. I think we're good. I think we're good. Hold, hold what you got. Hold what you got. Last shot. Let's do this. Come on. Oh, fuck. No, 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 no. God damn it. We were so close. Let's see. Turn around. Just turn around. Turn around. Now's our chance. Now's our chance. Get this right. Get the shot right. Get the shot right. Get the shot right. Get the shot right. And here we go. Okay, I think we got it. <laughs> oh, that was close. Oh my God. Note to self, do less wire work and actually plan maybe more wires for models. Normally I use one, I gotta use more and it sucks. Come on, you blasted. Also, tripods are been having have, I've been having trouble with lately. Unfortunately. Come on. There we go. Okay. So let's get you guys back here. I can see a bit more of the action. So now we're gonna do one more shot and then I'm gonna call it a night on this stream. Because we've been going for about two hours. I love doing these. If you guys wanna see more, let me know. But we're gonna do one more shot with little pinky pinky here. So we're just gonna unravel her very slightly. We're gonna carefully get rid of this of these duct tape. And there, no decals were harmed whatsoever. Ta-da! All right, one more shot. That's usually how it goes. So it's it's going to be stop motion. It's going to be a lot easier. The way we're going to do this, it's going to be done on a flat flat board. So right on here. And unfortunately, I don't think you guys will be able to see this shot. But it's going to be the shot where the pterodactyl kind of like flies in, folds its wings, and comes back like that. So how we're going to do this is basically... 
have uh, kind of angled, kind of, I want to kind of get her like that maybe? Yeah, a bit more, yeah, like exactly like that. And we're just going to start her there. And yeah, she's just basically going to be animated in that sense. So I'm going to try to maybe bring, so you can see this last shot being done. Kind of at this angle. There we go. Okay. I know the ring light's a bit of a problem, but just bear with me, guys. It's the last shot, so let's uh, get this going. Okay. So, first shot. I'm going to be very slightly careful. I'm going to bring her head back. Oh, shit, shit. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. There. You kind of fold her a little bit. There. Oh, shit. And I bumped it to the camera, some bitch. Of course the last shot's gonna be a problem. Because of course it is. That's fine. I just gotta be careful not to bump the camera. What I'm gonna do is just kind of close the thing. Bring it down. I want to slightly tilt her. So maybe what I'll do is I'll add some tape on her side. Very slightly. Like that. Kind of bring it closer down. Now the thing is, I want to kind of bring her up, kind of flip her, right? So I gotta figure out how I'm gonna do that. Maybe just a little slight bit of tape, a little slight. It's gonna be show a little gap, but it should be fine. We should be okay. Just bear with me, guys. Like that. Bring it up a little bit. So, shit, we're gonna need more. <laughs> we're definitely gonna need more. A bit more like that. Come on, there we go. We might have to make a quick little just jump to it like this, unfortunately, because this thing is not cooperating. Or, let's think about this for a sec. So I, I, what's great is I can see the previous frame, so I know what I'm doing. So maybe I could just kind of cheat it slightly. It's going to show a little gap. There we go. So it's going to be a little bit of a quick flip, unfortunately for Kim, but that's what you do. Like that. And then slightly... And just kind of bring it back a little bit. Again, very slightly, very slightly. If we move the camera a little bit. Fuck. That's what I was afraid of. Because it's hard to keep this kind of stuff stable. So, like, well, I have one other option. Maybe you just have it like this. It's hard to do a flip like this for her. Because it's kind of hard to adjust her wings slightly and make it look more like a smooth motion, but you try. Oh, oh, I might have a solution. Might have a solution. Come on. Come on, baby. Come on. Let's do this. Let's do this. Do not fail me. Slightly stick. Here we go. So once she's like this, then I can bring her up. It's 
okay. That's okay. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Go. Eh, okay, we're good. We're good. We're good. Keep on going. Just keep on going. Bring it around town. Bring it around town. There we go. Now we're talking. Then I can get rid of the tape very slightly and just kind of leaner a little bit there we go I slightly bring her in and then just kind of close her up slightly there slightly again I'm gonna read the comments but I really want to focus on this guys just bear with me that. That. Careful. Carefully. Oh. Oh. Bring her in for the final bit. Oh, oh actually, it did it for me. And... Just do a couple of frames. And I think we're good. I think we got it. Let's check the shot and make sure we got it, all right? Okay, it'll have to do. It'll have to do. There we go. So there, yeah, there we go. There's the shot. So that's going to be when it kind of zooms in on the Megazord. Is this going to be its chest piece? But that's pretty good. That's probably the closest we're going to get. So with that said, I'm going to edit in timeline. Great shot, kid. That was one in a million. Remember, the false will be with you. Save it. Fuck it. I'm at that point. I'm just, that was a tense one. That was, as Anakin would say in Phantom Menace, this is tense. Part two, get off all this autopilot. You're going to get us both killed. Okay, so we're down to our last minute. So I'm going to answer three more questions, and then we're going to call it a night, obviously. Will there be... And of course, right when we finish, she falls. She falls. That's great. Um, will there be an A day where your reviews become easy, really easy? Hopefully someday, because I've had those uh, moments. But right now, reviews have been very difficult because, one, of life experiences, and two, due to them getting bigger and bigger and they're just getting to be higher and I want to make improve more and I want to be bigger. I want to get better at what I'm doing um, because it also allows me to make movies in the in the reviews at the same time. Uh, do I have the Thunder Megazord? No, I do not. Um, the only thing I have is the uh, Falcon Zord, uh, which I again found at a uh, value village of all things. But yeah, the other Zords I'm not a fan of. Like really just the... Just the dino zords and the animal based ninja zords in Mighty Morphin. Um, all right, so uh, let's get one more question and then I'm gonna call a night. So, first one to fire, make it count because I gotta, I gotta go. But I actually, if you guys want to see more of these, let me know. If I do more tomorrow, depending on what's happening, I might live stream it. Have I seen Bad Seed? No, I have not, and I don't know what the fuck that is. All right, well, that answers all our questions. Those are the last three questions. So, 
Of course, guys, thank you all so much for this live stream. This was actually really fun to do one of these and actually get back more into doing stop motion, showing you the process of it and having fun with it and showing you what goes on in my world when I'm alone making these. So, of course, if you guys want to donate to our channel, link down below to our Patreon. Just a dollar a month will get you early access or, you know, a dollar more a month. Get your early access to a bunch of stuff as well as extra special features. And of course, if you guys want to send us donations, gifts, letters, you can so at this address at Big Jack Films, P.O. Box 326, Queensville, Ontario, L0G100. We'd love to hear from you guys. And, you know, with the holidays coming up, uh, it's going to be great. So, come on, Rexy, stand up for the crowd. Stand up for the crowd. You're on You're on shot. Let's, uh, let's get your light off yet. Um... So a couple things to look forward to, hopefully, this week. Uh, there's probably only going to be about three videos, depending if I do another one of these live streams about doing the animation. Uh, basically, here's essentially what's going to be happening. Here are the videos you'll be seeing. Uh, Monday, hopefully, there will be a uh, Kong 76 tribute to two uh, people from the cast and crew that have recently passed away I want to talk about. So I'll probably shoot that tomorrow, because that's a very easy video to do. Uh, Wednesday, obviously, hopefully a live stream. I might be at Josh's because we might be staying at his place early to binge watch the Star Wars movies. So, I don't know. I might broadcast it or something. Uh, and then Friday, yeah, you'll see my full, our, our full on first impressions of the final installment of the Skywalker saga with Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. Our review will be coming out Friday. And, um, yeah, we hope, we hope you guys, uh, get to see our final impressions of this film. Ho I'm hoping it sticks to the landing. I'm going in with no expectations. Um, but yeah, those are what to look forward to. And maybe I'll do more live streams showing off the animation stuff. So, again, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, until, if there's any more comments, questions, or whatever you have, let us know in the comment section below. Until the next video, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. This is Big Jack Films signing off, saying... When you go into the Rise of Skywalker, take your erotic fan fiction, put it on the back burner, and if it's not on screen for you, don't complain about it for 20 plus hours about dissecting everything wrong with it, and take your ideas, and to quote Lloyd Kaufman, make your own damn movie. I'll see you guys later. Peace out.